hierarchical and stepwise regressions. I'm going to lump these together in the same video, but this is what you will be tested on. Okay, so for this problem, your DV is, is days in the hospital. Pretend you're working for a hospital and you're trying to come up with a prediction equation that will try to give the hospital a heads up on how much you're going to spend with each patient, patient based on their age, how much money they make, and their exercise, how much they exercise. Okay, you would go to analyze, regression, linear, and days in the hospital is the DV, and the rest of these are IVs. But now we're doing a hierarchical, so that's when you click the next, annual, next, exercise. You have the option. You don't have to hit next if you don't want to. The computer automatically knows. Sometimes I hit it, sometimes I don't. Okay. So what that do, does is SPSS is going to run it's going to run a regression model with the first variable only and then it's going to rerun a second regression with the first and second variables and then it's going to rerun it one last time with all three variables. So you're going to have three different regressions there. But let's go to statistics. We always want these guys in the Durbin Watson and plots. We want the Z pred on the bottom, Z resid on top. And our Mahalanobis. And that's it. So here's the output. Very important, even though I'm not checking the assumptions, whenever you run any kind of regression, hierarchical, stepwise, uh, simple, or multiple, you're supposed to always check the, check the assumptions, but I want to make these short videos. So here we go. Descriptive statistics. Really don't care in a regression model. Correlations. Eh, there's the DV. And I don't see any correlation between any IV close to zero. This box tells you that you ran a hierarchical. Every time you hit enter, that tells the computer to add this variable to the model. So you got, if you have more than one, that means you ran a hierarchical regression. Here's the model summary. So there's model one, and that's strictly with age. So you look at the R square for age, that's kind of dinky. And you go over here to the significance box. Hold on. So age is not significant, right? The very first one right off the bat there is not significant. So in other words, age is not a good predictor of how long you're going to stay in a hospital. Second model, that is it adds income. To age, okay. So now you got two variables, but you know one of them is no good. So adding income to age, yep. How much a person makes their SES is a good predictor of how long they're going to stay in the hospital. The last model, number three down here, it added how much you exercise per month. So we're going to scroll over here to the significant F change, and it was significant. So in other words, how much a person makes. And how, how many minutes they exercise are good predictors of how many days they're going to stay in a hospital. Very, very important. With hierarchical, this is your box. That tells you that if the new variable was added, if it was significant or not. Again, this is your box for hierarchical. So moving on up. Let me move this over for you. Ooh. So the ANOVA, this should agree with the, the original box, right? The first model was not significant because it only had age. But when you start adding other variables, it does become significant. And everything else just basically works the same. So you don't look at model number one. We know it was no good. You really don't even look at model number two. You want to look at model number three. It has all three of the variables in there, and it will tell you whether they're significant or not. And the first one, age, not significant. Income, definitely significant. Exercise, significant. So basically, you would use this box to write your prediction equation, but you would leave out age because it's not significant. And again, everything else about a regular standard multiple regression, you have to check, okay? And that's those are your five assumptions, linearity, uh, multicollinearity, autocorrelation, uh, homoscedasticity, and what else am I missing? Hold on.
Oh, yeah, right on top. Multivariate normality. So please, please, please use this Moodle as your book. Everything you're going to be tested on, there's a ton of everything in here. It explains it over and over again with all the video examples. But the best way to learn it is to do it. All right. So that's it for hierarchical. I'm going to switch over to stepwise. Please hold. If I didn't mention this before, remember whenever you use hierarchical, you as the researcher decide which order the variables go into the regression model. You. You decide. Or there's a theory behind it or it was in somebody else's research paper. So again, but you make the decision. That's what hierarchical is all about. Now, stepwise, on the other hand, we simply let SPSS do all the heavy lifting. Normally, the only reason I ever use a stepwise is when you got a million variables. And occasionally, you're going to run into a study where they have a million variables. Everything is recorded. That's not a bad thing. It's just, you know, the more information, uh, the better. But let's do this. Analyze regression linear. And we, our DV is sales in thousands, and everybody else is a is an IV. Let me put them in there. And you just simply click stepwise, but everything else is still the same, right? Click, 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 and your plots. And just do what I do. You know, it's just automatic. Just click them in case you got to run the whole thing. And, all right, there's our regression. Don't care. Don't care. Do care. So according to SPSS, the only two variables that are good at predicting this, the overall sales, were the wheelbase size and the curb weight of all things. Hmm. I wouldn't have picked those two, but again, I just make up the data as I go along. So... The first predictor is wheelbase, and it can predict 16% of the variance of the sales by itself. Hmm, that's pretty good. Go over here, and you look at the significant change. When, because once you put in stepwise, it treats it like a hierarchical, which, which it kind of is there, right? So it found that the, the strongest predictor was wheelbase and it gives you the f squared change and that is significant so that means wheelbase is a significant predictor and the second predictor is curb weight and there's the r squared that's the combined r squared with these two variables you can explain 24 percent of the sales which is pretty strong and again you just take a look at the r squared change was significant or not and it was and you just treat it like any other regular regression there. Let's go down to the coefficients box. And again, because these both of these very uh, both of these variables are significant, we look at the second model. So the beta weights that tells us that wheelbase is the best predictor. It's pretty big, and curb weight is the second predictor and they're both significant. Very exciting. So that's basically it with Stepwise, uh-oh, see how this shapes a pizza if you put an outline around it? That means this thing is totally messed up. Let me double check. Whoa. Yeah, so this violated homeless cadasticity. All right, but that's it. Study, study, study. Practice, practice, practice. MGZ, out.